What's up guys, this is the Vikings and Extras with John Gramer. I'm your host, John Gramer, and in today's episode, I'm actually redoing this because, one, the first time I did it, my I was trying to screen record on my computer to show you the a preview of the Vikings versus 49ers game and also the 49ers and Vikings stats, but also because when I really listen to the audio, because I use my phone as my mic with voice memos i would set it a good foot from my mouth which is clearly some for some reason just too far to get any good audio and it was so quiet it really bothered me so i actually have a setup right here because it needs to be close enough that the audio is loud but also not but also not too close that it's really just noisy and not quality so i actually have a setup on a binder and i also readjusted my camera too so we're gonna watch this video the viking minnesota vikings versus san francisco 49ers week 12 nfl game preview then we're gonna look at the stats of the 49ers and the vikings and then i'm gonna go over my key points for the Vikings to beat the 49ers. Let's go. Also, one thing I should mention before the video this video starts is I've already watched the video and what the heck? Same thing happened. Why does that always happen? Like I get into full screen mode and then something suddenly the screen the screen recording stops. So I've already watched this video and I can say some things they say in it are just bogus. So let's start. The Minnesota Vikings, alive and kicking, face the equally revitalized 49ers in San Francisco this week. Can you hear that, Skull fans? He's headed your way. It's a give to Debo Samuel. He's gliding his way. All the way. So, 8 carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown for Debu Samuel sounds really good. But you have to remember, this was against the Jaguars, who have no defense. All they have is Josh Allen and Miles, and Miles Jack. Sure, they shut down the Bills last week, but that was one game. Other than that, they haven't done anything. So, I would love to see Debu get 5 yards or less. Also... What I don't get is how this year is when Debu Samuel decides to break out because Jimmy Garoppolo has been on a decline ever since 2019 when he had his actually good year. And yeah. Also, the run defense, I don't get how we've got a lot of players back like Everson Griffin, Daniel Hunter, Michael Pierce, Everson Griffin. Not ever seen Griffin, Eric Kendricks, and yet our run defense is still bad. Oh my gosh, he had such a good game. If only that would help him win. Put a way better numbers and against a way, a way better defense. Yeah, he's having really an MVP type season. Twenty-one touchdowns, two interceptions, over two hundred seventy yards per game. But of course, he's not going to get the MVP because he's Kirk Cousins and not Patrick Mahomes. But we can't just force the pass too much because we're not a passing team. We're a, run we're a running team, and we have been ever since Adrian Peterson. So we, we need to get Dalvin Cook to get into rhythm, but then also be able to get the passing game going. Yeah. He also had a defender on him. What I mean by that is... Who... Unless you're a Jaguars fan, you probably cannot name a single defensive back the Jaguars have. Ever since they lost A.J. Bouye and Jalen Ramsey. 
Meanwhile, the Packers have Jair Alexander, Darnell Savage. I'm not sure how good Darnell Savage is. I think he's okay, but... And he's going up against one of the strongest passing games in the league. Our, yeah. Gosh. Uh, the Vikings, for their passing game, we have Kirk Cousins, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. We also have just Je Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and KJ Osborne, which is definitely one of the best wide receiver tandems in the league. We also have Tyler Conklin, who's a really good tight end, a real solid tight end. Yeah, well, well, he's figured out a way to shut down Nick Bosa. He had a wide open hole for that touchdown. So what I meant by some things they mentioned in that video were bogus is that they talk about some of the good stats that certain 49ers players had against the Jaguars. Like, he had the, sure, he had great stats, but they were against the Jaguars. That's not a good example. A good example is Justin Jefferson's game against the Packers because the Packers actually have one of the best corners in the game, Jair Alexander. And they have and they have Adrian Amos, who's also a good safety. And Justin Jefferson had eight receptions for 169 yards and two touchdowns. So, looking at these predictions, which I noticed earlier, is a couple of them are bogus, like Jeremiah's and uh, Sessler's. And what I mean by their bogus is they have the game decided by they have the game decided by more than seven points. The only game the Vic the only Vikings game that hasn't been decided by seven or less points was the Seahawks game where we beat them by thirteen. But other than that, every single game has been like seven or less points. Daniel Jeremiah has the 49ers winning by eleven. Sessler has them winning by eight. Which yes, I still a one possession one possession game, but when you think of a possession, you think of a touchdown in a, in a PAT, not a two point conversion. So I'm not really thinking of that as like a one possession game. Yeah. So what I want to think immediately is, oh my goodness, it happened again. Why? Again, I have to start a new recording, a new screen recording. I, I would love to say I would love to be able to say that we can definitely beat the 49ers but the 40 beca well, because we have a really we have a great offense but the 49ers also have a great offense and it's actually a new uh recently really good offense so let's look at these stats Jimmy G over 2100 yards Eli Mitchell, I'm surprised Murray Mostert isn't actually the leading guy. Maybe he's injured or something. But then this is what shocks me. D.B. Samuel, 994 yards. But after that, George Kittle, 412 yards. And Brandon Ayuk, 341 yards. Those two guys combined have less receiving yards than D.B. Samuel has. One guy... So... Debu Samuel has nearly half of all the yards that Jimmy G has, and if you combine Jimmy G with Trey Lance, he has about forty percent of what they have. 
So up about a thousand for a debu, and then about tw- about twenty four twenty four sixty for the quarterbacks. That's about that's about forty percent. Like no, yes. Uh, let, let let's look at the Viking stats. Kirk Cousins won. He has way more. He has over six hundred more yards than than uh. Jimmy G has also Justin Jefferson at eleven yards. I don't remember him passing. I don't remember him completing a pass. Dalvin Cook seven hundred thirty four yards and Alexander Madison nearly three hundred yards. Kirk Cousins sixteen nine yards. Well, pretty good number. Then Justin Jefferson, yes, he has a ton of he has a lot of yards. But also Adam Thielen has far more yards than George Kittle does, who's the who is the forty nine ers number two receiver. Then Tyler Conklin has more yards than Brendan Ayuk. And also, Justin Jefferson is only taking up a little over a third of Kirk Cousins' total passing yards. Not close to a half. Which, uh, I mean, based on how Jefferson played last year, he had 1,400 yards. He, it's, it doesn't surprise me much that he has a huge amount of Kirk Cousins' yards. But... So now let's go into some of my key points, some keys for the Vikings to beat the 49ers. Number one is shut down Debu Samuel. Yes, they have other good targets like Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle. But if they have those good targets, why don't they have more yards? Maybe that's a sign that the, if they rely that much on Debu Samuel... If we shut down Debu Samuel, that could change their entire offensive scheme, their entire offensive plan if we just shut him down. Now, he is facing Patrick Peterson, and I'm not too worried about that. Patrick Peterson is a decent uh, cornerback. But also, one thing I'm thinking about, we should definitely try to double-team Debu, at least at certain points of the game, maybe like on third downs, especially on like crucial plays like third downs late in the game when it's close and then force them to get the ball to Kittle and Ayuk which that doesn't sound bad like forcing them to get the ball to two other good targets the reason why I can actually say force them to is because they have no yards compared to Debu another thing as uh I'm not sure who was uh comp who was narrating that video we, the Vikings are 5-1 when Kirk Cousins had throws for over 275 yards, which means that we we want to try to get Kirk to throw a lot, but we can't just have him p- padding his own stats because we're not a passing team. We're a running team. We have been ever since we've had Adrian Peterson. We need Dalvin Cook to get at least at least a good game, maybe at least 80 or 90 yards, but we and then we can also have Kirk Cousins throwing the ball because I don't think we can win just by Kirk Cousins throwing the ball. And then again, we were close when we were playing against the Bengals because, uh, what's his name? Dalvin Cook only had 60 yards and we still nearly beat them. If the refs were smart, we might have. If they didn't call that fumble. So, yeah, who are their... Who are their other wide receivers? Because I know we have... So our best wide receivers are Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, Tyler Conklin, BC Johnson, those DD Westbrook, those types of guys. Oh gosh, Travis Benjamin. It's surprising to me that he's still in the league. So they have Debu Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Muhammad Sanu, and also George Kittle. Is Muhammad Sanu washed? I feel like he's kind of washed by now. He's just getting old. Let's check his stats. Muhammad Sanu stats. Because maybe he's... Yeah, he has... He's done nothing this year. Only less than 200 yards. So... I gotta wrap this up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, turn on the bell notification. 
always remember the Vikings, the Packers will always suck. Skull Vikings.